Hello, it's Samantha. I wanted to give this quick update. I'm sitting here on the floor of my room. I, I don't know. I just make videos wherever they happen to be. Um, baby's sleeping again. Another reason why my voice is a little quiet. If you see me wiping my eye, I'm not crying. This eye just waters all the time. It's a side effect of my medication. Okay, so I wanted to give an update on my recovery after my lumpectomy. Hopefully this helps people that are having a lumpectomy. Um, if you're having a lumpectomy with no lymph node removal, this video is for you. If you're having a lumpectomy with lymph node removal, the recovery is harder, a lot harder actually. Um, it's not like it's the worst recovery in the world, but that's how easy just a simple lumpectomy recovery is. It's just very, very easy. Um, I have other videos about um, having my lymph nodes removed and a lumpectomy at the same time so you can go check out those videos if you want more information about how my surgery was done then um, but I'm just here to explain how easy it is just to have a lumpectomy so if you're having just a lumpectomy recovery is gonna go really well for you <laughs> so I had my lumpectomy on a Wednesday that Wednesday, I felt pretty good after the procedure. I was able to go to my parents' house and have some lunch, and then I went home and just took some more Tylenol and basically got in bed. I was just really tired from like the actual anesthesia medicines and stuff. I ended up not needing general anesthesia. I was just doing like the twilight sedation thing, which is like what a lot of people do if you've ever gotten your wisdom teeth out. It's very similar to that, I think. I mean, that's how I got my wisdom teeth out. It was just under twilight sedation. Um, so you don't need like general anesthesia with the whole like tube down your throat and all of that if you are having like a really simple lumpectomy. Some, lumpectomy, some lumpectomies you still need general, but mine you didn't. I just couldn't do things, so I would kind of forget about it. Um, I couldn't like use my left arm to like open a door really hard and I would be like, oh, I have to use my right arm. I couldn't lift my arm up very high. I couldn't even lift my right arm up really high, but I could lift it higher than the left arm. My lumpectomy was on the left side, so I basically just like couldn't use that side of my body. I was actually comfortable sleeping on my side. Um, I am a side sleeper, so whenever I have a surgery, I kind of get worried because it's really hard for me to sleep on my back but I ended up not having an issue sleeping on my side and my lumpectomy was on my left breast, but it's over on this side of the breast, um, like toward the middle. So I was actually able to sleep on my left side and that was more comfortable for me. Like it wasn't completely on my left side, but I was like more tilted on my left side. That was more comfortable for me than sleeping on my right side. I think because sleeping on my right side made this breast kind of like dangle down a little bit more, which like hurt more but sleeping more on my left side I could like put the breast against the mattress a little bit and then like it supported it a little more if that makes sense and so I basically slept kind of on my left side and on my back and if I wanted to sleep on my right side I would kind of like get a pillow and try to put it there but mostly slept on my left side. And the next day was good, like better than I expected. My husband was watching my daughter all this day. They had some fun activities that they were doing. So the only thing that I did with her was um, do her hair in the morning because she has really long hair. So if her hair doesn't get done, it gets in her face. He can do it. It's just, I you know, wanted to make things as easy for her as possible. But um, so I basically did that and um, he basically had her for the whole day so I was able to just kind of catch up on rest and it was just good. I probably could have done a lot more things. I did do some things. I could clean up toys and stuff but I wouldn't have been able to like vacuum or take a whole load of laundry up and down the stairs or anything like that. Friday was also f fine. So my main problem after my lumpectomy was I started having a lot of stomach issues. I'm on Verzenio, which is a bemocyclib, and one of the problems that it causes is a lot of diarrhea. Um, but after the surgery, I had like an increased amount of diarrhea. So that was my main symptom that I was dealing with. On Friday and Saturday, my stomach just hurt so bad that I was basically in bed because of that. I was able to lift my daughter. She's about 27 pounds on Saturday, and I could lift her using my right arm and 
um, a little bit of support with my left. So that was like no issue at all. I might have been able to do it on Friday too, but I just didn't try. I didn't want to push it. But by Saturday, I was able to lift her and I had no issues. But I did just have really bad stomach aches on Saturday and um, and Friday. And so I one of those days, I basically like slept the entire day just because I was feeling sick. Um, but my problems were stomach problems. They didn't have to do with like the actual lumpectomy site. So I got a bunch of extra rest because of, uh, because of having all these stomach issues that I probably wouldn't have needed if I didn't have that. Um, eventually those started going away. On Sunday I was feeling a lot better, but still having stomach issues. Um, but by the next Monday, I was pretty good. I was pretty ready to go. And, and by a week after the surgery, by Wednesday, I was like basically back to normal. I was able to take my daughter up and down the stairs and easily do stuff. So Monday morning, I had um, somebody come and take my daughter for the morning, but I really probably didn't even need that. The only reason I really needed that was because I was just so exhausted from having all the stomach problems and all of that. But if I didn't have those stomach issues, then I probably wouldn't have even needed somebody to come on Monday at all. Like I was basically good. Tuesday, I was pretty good. Uh, looked after my daughter the entire day, no issues. And Wednesday, I felt like I was like completely back to normal. And then by the next weekend, by like Saturday and Sunday, I was like totally good. So like the only thing that I had to do was I had to make sure that my daughter didn't like slap me in the breast because she's very wiggly. She's 16 months. Um, so she's very, very wiggly and she's aggressive and she will throw her head back if she's having a tantrum. So I got to like be careful of those things. So I kind of like go like this if she was sitting on my lap just to kind of like hide the breast in that area over on this side and she could like move around on the right side of my body no problem but it really was not that bad like I had a 16 month old so she's very wiggly very aggressive and I was worried about that because you can't really explain that much to a 16 month old you can a little bit and I, I did and she did understand a little bit because she knew that I wasn't able to pick her up after the surgery for a while and she like understood that a tiny bit um but she's still you, know, you can't explain to her okay like don't flail around like you normally do because she doesn't realize that she's doing anything wrong so if you have a toddler and you're getting a lumpectomy that's just a simple lumpectomy I think that you really will only have problems for like the first three days and after that you should be pretty good even if you have like a really crazy wiggly toddler because i do like i said she's only 16 months but she is like 27 pounds so she's pretty heavy for her age i didn't have any issues carrying her three days after my surgery i don't know how much weight i could have carried so i can only like go off of my daughter who's 27 pounds but probably could have carried more weight too. I also wanted to give an update on the pathology report because I didn't include that in my last video um, even though I had the results. I had some of the results before I posted the last video but I wanted to wait until I had all the results to make the video but I still don't have all of the results um, but I didn't want to keep you in the dark. I so I want to give you the information that I have. The information that I have is that the margins were all clear. Margins were negative for cancer, so that's like super good. That means we got all the cancer out of the breast with the lumpectomy. The information that I don't have that I thought I would have by now is the status of the receptors. So apparently they just didn't run the receptors to find out if it was estrogen, progesterone, or HER2 negative or positive. And uh, apparently they just don't automatically run those if you've had a previous biopsy. I had a biopsy in September, but I think um, my oncologist wanted, still wanted to know what the receptors were. So my surgeon gave the report to my oncologist and my oncologist was like, hey, can you have them run the receptors? And I haven't heard any information about them yet. So I don't know if they've run the receptors yet. Um, I know it'll take some time for them to get that information back because it takes a little bit of time to do that. Um, but I'm still waiting on that. So if 
I get that in the next few days, I'll add another section to the video explaining the status of those receptors, but if not, I'm just gonna like post this video as is with the information that is good that you need to know, which is the margins were negative. And I think that that's the information that most people probably care about anyway. <laughs> I had the surgery on Wednesday morning and I had my results on Monday morning. So I got a call from my surgeon around 11 a.m. on Monday or so. Um, so that's how long it took for me to figure out that my margins were all clear and I've just kind of been waiting on the status of the receptors because I got the pathology report back and it had receptor status in there but it was all from my original diagnosis. It was all the original information so I was like, is this the same? Like, did everything stay the same? Or did they just like fill in that part of the report with old information? And I checked with my uh, surgeon's office and they were like, yeah, that was just old information. So that's what made me reach out to my oncologist and be like, hey, are you guys, do you guys care about the receptors? Cause I didn't know. I thought maybe if the margins were clear, maybe they wouldn't care about it because they're just like assuming that it's all out. So then it doesn't matter, but. He was like, no, maybe we kind of do want to know. And I was like, yeah, okay, good, because I kind of want to know too. So yeah, anyway, I just wanted to give that small update. If I get the status of the receptors in the next few days, I'll include that in this video. But if not, this is the end of the video. And thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. Um, please be respectful in the comments. Lots of people just have genuine questions, and I love to answer those. So um I don't have any problems with any of you guys asking questions. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you want. And yeah, that's all. Bye.